Mine is to communicate the decision of the government of Kenya to notify the people of Kenya of government action aimed at eradicating illicit brews, drugs, and substance, substance abuse in the country. His Excellency Dr. William Ruto, the President, among other things, was elected on the premise of restoring the dignity of the, to the people of Kenya, especially those at the bottom of the socio-economic pyramid. To do so, the President identified key areas that require radical legal policy, administrative and operational reforms. Illicit brews, drugs and substance abuse, majorly among teenagers, the youth and even the elderly, are not only a grave social concern, but is now an existential threat to the well-being and sustainable future of our country. These brews, drugs, and substances are directly and negatively impacting on economic growth and development, ruining lives and livelihoods occasioning family disintegration, facilitating crime, and the spread of disease, including HIV and AIDS, and indeed fellow Kenyans, brews that are illegal, drugs, and substances are now a major national security threat and also a threat to public health across the country. Every household in Kenya today hosts and can relate to incidences of alcohol and drug abuse. No family has been spared. If your family has been spared, your neighbor's family has not been spared. It is on this basis that the President assigned the Deputy President, His Excellency Rigavi Gashagwa, the role of leading the war on illicit brews, drugs, and substance abuse. Strategic consultative regional meetings bringing together senior security officers, national government administration officers, members of parliament and county assemblies, lead ministries and agencies, religious groups, opinion leaders and the community have been held in Mount Kenya region, Lower Eastern region, Rift Valley and Coast region. Key regulators within the pharmaceutical and veterinary fields have been activated to similarly moderate the illegal and irregular use of regulated prescription drugs that have now begun to find their way among youth in Mombasa and Northeastern and are now a leading cause of substance abuse. And this demonstrates that the problem is now essentially a national problem. No region, no part of the country is free. From these consultations, gaps have been identified and progress is now being made on the legislative, administrative, institutional, and enforcement fronts. 11 counties are at different stages of development developing model alcoholic drinks control laws 
with Nyandarua County having led the pace in securing full enactment of a now enhanced licensing and enforcement framework. Law enforcement officials found complicit in the manufacture and trade of illicit alcohol and substances have been severely disciplined already. The screening, rehabilitation, and the integration of victims of alcohol and drug abuse has also been enhanced. But there have been some drawbacks. Last month, the country lost more than 20 lives in one village in Kirinyaga County to poison packaged as alcohol by the merchants of death. This, fellow Kenyans, is unacceptable. This trajectory must be contained before it escalates into a national disaster. For this reason, the government of Kenya has today, under the direction of His Excellency the President, convened all regional and county national government administration officers and security teams including county police commanders from the Kenya Police Service, the Administration Police Service, and the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, backed by relevant sector regulators. The consultations have not only identified the internal failures and fractured approaches that have facilitated these vices, but similarly reiterated the critical role that the national administration and security architecture will now be required to play in the restoration of the dignity and utility to a generation that would otherwise be lost. As previously indicated, the trade, consumption, and abuse of illicit alcohol, narcotic drugs, and psychotropic substances now ranks as one of the five key national security threats that include terrorism, banditry, and livestock wrestling, cultural, religious, and political extremism, and climate change. And therefore, this war that we announce commencing today is a war about the future of Kenya. This war that we launch here today is about the viability and sustainability of our republic. We have therefore the duty to communicate to all members of the public that the war that we launch today is not just a time-bound operation, it's a perpetual war which will continue as long as Kenya exists or as long as the problem exists whichever comes earlier. Therefore, where we have placed terrorists who plot to harm our country, the organized criminals terrorizing parts of our country, pretending to be cattle thieves, where we have placed religious, cultural, and political extremists who have hurt the country so badly in the past, including the recent event in Shakahola. This is the same place we have placed all those in Kenya who are engaged in one way or the other in the manufacture, distribution, sale, and I dare say even consumption of illicit drugs, narcotics, 
psychotropic substances and illicit liquor. And since this is about the future of the country, this is squarely a national security matter. This statement has taken time to situate why we are here. Right from the instructions of the president to his deputy, to the directives of the president through the National Security Council, and the rest of us. Therefore, any officer present here or watching from elsewhere who think this is the usual time-bound, periodic security operations is in for a root shock. As I said, what we start today will continue as long as Kenya exists or as long as the problem exists, whichever comes earlier. If the problem goes earlier, we stop the operation. If it doesn't end, we continue with the operation until the end of the world. Therefore, the government has adopted a national security posture in the management of this scourge. And by this, it must be clarified that as a national security threat, politics, culture, religion, and other antecedents that always cloud our, nas our national conversations are removed from this matter. It is purely a law enforcement matter. It's not political, it's not ethnic, it's not religious, it has nothing to do even with the economics of our country. And some of the measures you will understand are measures that will include government losing revenue if that will help us save the nation. In that regard, I am authorized to announce the following measures that will guide this very critical national survival exercise. One, pursuant to Section 42K of the Preservation of Public Security Act, all licenses and certification permits for second generation alcohol and alcoholic beverage distillers and manufacturers issued by the Kenya Revenue Authority and the Kenya Bureau of Standards stand suspended with immediate effect. All existing valid licenses will be vetted afresh within 21 days of this directive with premises approved to resume operations only upon receipt of fresh approval. Two, pass one to number one above. The Ministry of Interior and National Administration invites all currently licensed manufacturers and distillers to a meeting to be held on Tuesday, the 12th March 2024, at 10 a.m. on the above prescription, due notification, including venue and agenda, will be communicated to those who this information relates. Three. Fresh license applications shall require manufacturers to have quality control laboratories installed with gas chromatography with flame ionization dictators. And this must be operated by competent laboratory analysts and tests incoming raw materials and finished products before releasing them to the market. The laboratories should register with a provider of interlaboratory comparison and submit their quality control results to the Kenya Bureau of Standards on monthly basis. 
For the avoidance of doubt, fresh license applications shall require manufacturers to have quality control laboratories installed with gas chromatography with flame ionization detectors. Number four, all alcohol manufacturers shall henceforth establish and document all traders in their distribution chain and have procedures for ensuring full traceability from factory to the consumer of alcoholic products manufactured for sale. All alcoholic products shall include traceability information including manufacturer details, location, ingredients, and content. Number five, the Kenya Bureau of Standards shall ensure that within 45 days, all industrial ethanol is denatured or marked with a denaturing agent known as denatonium benzoate to prevent diversion and or the accidental use of industrial ethanol in alcohol manufacture. Number six, any licenses currently issued to bars and other outlets, premises by county governments that are contrary to the provisions of the Alcoholic Drinks and Control Act, especially as relates to licensing premises within residential areas and around basic educational institutions are declared null and void. County security teams are to secure and shut down and seize such promises with immediate effect. The licenses that have been issued contrary to the Alcoholic Drinks Control Act, which is national legislation, which supersedes county legislation. Licensing of bars which are in residential areas, licensing of bars next to educational institutions, all those licenses are declared null and void. And county security teams across the country must enforce the law that I have just cited with immediate effect. Number seven, no bars or alcoholic outlets shall be allowed to operate beyond the stipulated operation hours as provided for in Article 34 of the Alcoholic Drinks Control Act, failure to which the operator shall be fined or imprisoned as provided by law and all the drinks and related accessories in the premises will be forfeited with accompanying licenses uh, being revoked. I also need to clarify that the government has also engaged with the Director of Public Prosecutions and also other stakeholders, including the judiciary, all stakeholders in the administrative, uh, administration of justice. And one of the results of that engagement is that the Director of Public Prosecutions has assured the country that its office will be going for ancillary orders against those who perpetuate the vice of either manufacture, transportation, distribution, sale of alcohol. And those ancillary orders, which are already provided in law, include for feature of any motor vehicle that is transporting narcotics or other illicit substances, that those vehicles be forfeited to the state and also for feature of premises that are used to store merchandise, which falls in the category of our discussion this morning. 
And number seven, just to clarify that we must respect the laws that exist on hours when bars can be open. And if the hours when bars can be open are provided by law, it therefore means those are the same hours that the people of Kenya can enjoy their leisure in taking alcohol. The people of Kenya must go home when that time expires. They must proceed home. And they must leave before those hours and, 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 and make sure that uh, they reach home in good time because I'm told the, the speed of mobility when one is uh, intoxicated is a bit slow. So you don't want to collect Kenyans in dirty ditches uh, so they should go a little earlier but anybody found uh, taking alcohol or selling alcohol after those hours we will do what we must. Number eight all manufacturers, distillers who are aware of counterfeits of their products and fail to report to the anti-counterfeit authority on the same shall be deemed complicit. Licensed manufacturers will be required to furnish county security teams with a geolocation and physical details of their licensed premises, as well as stock records per licensed premises. Any other physical premises, stocking, manufacturing, and housing manufactured stocks will be deemed illegal stocks for destruction. Number nine, section 17A of the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act stipulates that a law enforcement officer or public officer who aids and abets any offense under the Act, including concealing the commission of any offense and collusion, shall be liable to punishment. In this regard, officers abetting, concealing, or colluding with any person to commit an offense under the Alcoholic Drinks uh, Act or even under the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act shall be liable in accordance with the law. The policy has also been given that no person who undermines the interests of our national security will be transferred. No officer will be transferred if they are culpable of undermining our national security interests. We'll find a way of expediting your removal from service in the shortest time possible. Uh, and, and the other things we can discuss, uh, including if you take us to court, we know what to do when you take us to court and we are patient enough to wait for hearings and appeal until the Supreme Court. By that time, Kenya will be on the move. Further, number 10, and in line with the Public Ethics Act, all public officers in the enforcement and compliance chain, namely the Kenya Revenue Authority, the Kenya Bureau of Standard, Standards, and the Anti-Counterfeit Authority, Public Health, NACADA, NGAO, National Police Service, and everybody else shall not own and operate a bar directly or through a proxy. All public officers currently operating such premises are required to shut them down or resign from the service with immediate effect. Cross-referencing of the public service uh, with the Public Service Commission, National Police Service Commission, and distinct AJJ staff records shall be undertaken to ensure compliance thereof. Number 11, all landlords 
or premise, premises owners shall be deemed aiders and abettors thereof and be liable for renting out space for establishment of bars, wines and spirits outlets in prohibited areas pass one to section 20C of the Penal Code, Cap 63 of the Laws of Kenya. 12. All chemists and agrovets must submit their licenses to the Pharmacy and Poisons Board and the Veterinary Medicine Directorate for verification within 30 days from today, failure to which they shall be deemed unlicensed for closure. All licensed and non-compliant drug manufacturers, agrovets, and chemists are to be shut down with immediate effect. The list of currently approved and licensed establishments have been shared with county security teams for reference. 13. All licensed pharmacists and veterinary doctors dispensing prescriptions, prescription drugs with, without prescription shall be registered. All licensed chemists, all pharmacies, and aggravates when issuing prescription drugs shall mandatorily issue a certification of the issuing chemist or aggravate name and license number of the issuing officer for purposes of tracing or traceability. 14. All vehicles, buildings used in storage, manufacturing, trafficking in illegal drugs, illicit brews and alcohol shall pass one to section 74 of the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Control Act be seized and deemed to be government property. 15. The Ministry of Interior and National Administration and the Ministry of Health shall put in place measures for branding and color specification of all alcoholic and tobacco distributing distribution vehicles. Further, such products are to be transported between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. only. The guidelines to be issued within 14 days from this directive with manufacturers expected to secure full implementation within 40, 45 days. 16. A multi-stakeholder approach has been instituted to strengthen surveillance, enforcement, and compliance at all levels led by the national government administrative officers who are the chairpersons of the security and intelligence committees in their various jurisdictions. 17. Surveillance at the border points will be undertaken through a multi-agency framework with key actors including the Kenya Bureau of Standards, Immigration, the Kenya Revenue Authority, the National Police Service, and the Anti-Counterfeit Agency. 18. To enforce compliance on package or packaging according to the Alcoholic Drinks Control Act, the Kenya Bureau of Standards shall within 60 days from the date hereof review the guidelines on minimum quality on the minimum quantity of alcoholic drinks to enhance the same from 250 milliliters to 750 milliliters or higher. 19. All enforcement agencies shall undertake integrity vetting of all officers manning our border points, highways, and regional offices. Only officers of integrity and good standing will be appointed to conduct surveillance at the border points and highways, especially Namanga, Isebania, Moyale, Isiolo, 
and all the other affected areas. 20. The importation, manufacture, sell, use, advertisement, promotion, or distribution of shisha is outlawed in the country. Any establishment found in breach of this provision will be shut down with immediate effect. County security teams are required to enforce this prescription without fail. 21. The labeling and packaging of all tobacco products in Kenya must comply with the provisions of the Tobacco Control Act of 2007 and the Tobacco Control Regulations of 2014. Products that do not comply must be withdrawn from the market immediately. 22. The National Treasury is urged to fast track, to fast track the harmonization of custom and excess and excise duty of ethanol within the East African region to prevent arbitrage within 45 days. Further, within 60 days, the National Treasury shall conclude taxation proposals towards the following. A. Incorporation of a model of taxation based on alcohol content, B, review the taxation framework for beer and other non-spirituous alcoholic drinks to mitigate the risk of harmful effects, and C, mandatory adopt adoption of digital Kenya Bureau of Standards and Kenya Revenue Authority stamps for all alcohol and alcohol-based products and the withdrawal of physical stamps. 23. The Ministry of Health is urged to ensure to issue directives for all level 3 and above hospitals to establish dedicated rehabilitation wards or facilities for victims of substance abuse, drugs, and illicit alcohol in line with the existing norms and standards and any consultations with the county government. 24. Parliament is required to prioritize and fast track the processing of all legislative interventions towards amendments to the public to the Alcoholic Drinks Control Act, the Tobacco Control Act, the Public Health Act, the Pharmacy and Poisons Board Act, the Veterinary Medicines Directorate Regulations, and other accompanying regulations. In particular, the amendments to the Alcoholic Drinks Control Act shall ensure that county licensing is conditional on receipt of a clearance certificate from NACADA as a precondition for the issuance of license to sell, distribute, and otherwise deal with the alcoholic drinks. 25. All county security committees have received the existing approved and licensed lists of manufacturers, distillers, pharmacists, and aggravates. The committees are hereby directed to shut down and destroy all illicit manufacturing installations, distilleries, aggravates, and chemists not within the approved list of licensed enterprises within 10 days of this directive. County Security Committee members will be held personally liable and subject to disciplinary action where an unlicensed manufacturing installation, distillery, aggravate, or chemist is found operating in their respective jurisdiction. Community and neighborhood committees and members of the public are required to support this initiative through 
the designated toll-free line 1192. I repeat, community and neighborhood committees and members of the public are invited and even required to support this initiative through the designated toll-free line 1192. Since this is a national security threat, the obligation of individual citizens to support this cause is also mandatory for the sake of our nation because the duty to protect our nationhood and our constitutional order is a duty that binds every state organ, every arm of government, but it's also a duty that binds every individual. We must protect our nation together. Officers will be available to receive any complaints and concerns relating to the manufacture, trade, transportation, storage and consumption of illegal alcohol, drugs, and other substances. Na mtazamaji huyo ni waziri wa usalama Kidhure Kindiki hapo akiendelea uh, kuzungumza kuhusiana na mikakati hatua na vigezo